a working visit to the Parliament of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago by members of the Parliament of Barbados. A two-man delegation of the Barbados Parliament visited Trinidad and Tobago from June 9 to 13. His Honor, Michael Carrington, Speaker of the House of Assembly of the Barbadian Parliament, led the visit to the Office of the Parliament of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Accompanying Mr. Carrington was Clerk of the Barbados House of Assembly, Mr. Pedro Eastmond. The men attended several presentations by managers of the Communications Department and were taken on tours of the Broadcast and Information and Communications Technologies Departments, the Parliament Chamber, and the Parliament Channel's transmission site at Cumberland Hill. They also paid a courtesy call on Speaker of the House, the Honorable Bridget Anisette George, MP, and attended the sitting of the lower house that day. The Parliament Channel sat down for an interview with the visiting Speaker of the House, Mr. Carrington. What is the purpose of your visit? Well, first, let me say thank. Well, let me extend my thanks to the Parliament of Trinidad and Tobago for accommodating us. The purpose of the visit essentially is to have a look at your communication systems. Uh, we have been putting in place measures to reach out to the to the public more. Uh, we have had a live feed of our the proceedings of both houses of parliament for some time now, and we also on the on the web. Uh, we have other programs uh, like the Youth Parliament and so on, but what we do not have and what we think is necessary to have now is a dedicated television uh, channel. We recognize that um, Trinidad and Tobago has, has theirs in place, and uh, while we have made some step towards it, we are now on the cusp of, of putting that in place, you see. So we thought it would be a, better, a, a good idea to come to Trinidad and Tobago and see essentially how to do things. What are some of your plans for the Barbados House of Assembly? We have, we have taken the step a little while ago to, of course, put the Parliament on a sound ICT uh, protocol foundation. See? Um, of course, we are moving towards a, a paperless uh, Parliament. That is one of our aims. Of course, having said that, you know, there will be members who still like to the feel of paper and so on. We recognize that. That is all part and parcel of what we, what we, where we want to take Parliament. Um, so, to my mind, it's just a case of modernizing Parliament so that it is more accessible, so that uh, it is more people-friendly. people, people friendly. Um, We recognize, for instance, that, um, okay, to use an example of what's, the, what's happening, there used to be a time when you would write a letter, you get it in two days, if you wanted it um, hand delivered, you get a couple hours later, and then that moved to a situation where you can get it in minutes. You can the sender, the receiver can get it in minutes through fax. Well, that has all changed now by something called email. <laughs> and what has happened is that people expect an in, an instant uh, uh, response. In, in. So that that just gives. Uh, uh, I'm saying that to say basically that we have to take cognizance of the kind of framework, the environment in which we operate, so that. Uh, Bringing a, a dedicated television station helps in the process of, of modernizing Parliament. And that's that is what we, we have to do. We have to keep modernizing uh, as we go along to keep in step with what is happening. So uh, the question, uh, really, what, what are the plans for Parliament to keep it relevant, to keep it more accessible, and to use it basically as a tool uh, uh, for for, for uh, spreading, spreading what we do, educating people, and in, in defense of democracy. Uh, our fear is that too many people tend to see Parliament as those fellas in suits uh, who just get up there, talk a lot, and waste people's money kind of thing. Uh, that, of course, as you know, is not true. <laughs> so we, we want to change the, the perception. Uh, the only way to change the perception is to make Parliament more people friendly. And I, I think that is, that is, my, that is my, my vision for, for the Parliament of Barbados. What is the current structure of the Barbados House of Assembly? Well, the, the current structure is a bicameral system. We have an elected House of uh, 30 members. The presiding officer, yours truly, is also elected. And... Um, 
And then there's a nominated House of 21 members, the Senate, uh, two independent, uh, seven, uh, sorry, two opposition, seven independent members, and then uh, 12 government members. There are those who feel that to a large extent the Senate is just partially ceremonial or rubber stamping. But uh, there are still those of us who feel that it has its role to play. The independent uh, senators gives the, the government the opportunity to draw from people who are not interested in elected politics, who may not even be interested in partisan politics, but who they feel have something to, well, the governor general, because he appoints them, who who he feels has, has, has something to offer in terms of their experience and their different uh, professional backgrounds and so on. So uh, I suppose it, it's, it, it, it's, it has been there for a while and I frankly don't see it going anywhere. Can you give any details about some of the discussions that have taken place during your visit? The whole idea is to have a look at, that the, at, at what you do in terms of your communications. And um, one of the, the major things that would have come out of it for me is a look at the, the committee system. We recognize that you have broadened the, the remit uh, of the committees by, by increasing the n a number of them. And uh, in so doing, I think uh, that is a step towards uh, greater transparency. Um, in, in our situation in Barbados, the the major committee is the Public Accounts Committee, which basically comes in at the, at the bottom end of things. Okay, after the Auditor General has made his re report, uh, the Public Accounts Committee has the remit of looking at it, seeing what issues would have been raised then, and, and then doing investigations to, 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 to see what, what has really gone on. Uh, of course, there are other committees that are set up from time to time, joint select committees to deal with different issues or to deal with a particular bill and, and so on. But it seems to me that the oversight committees, which have been in place for a long time in a number of jurisdictions, uh, some of them are more effective or are functioning more than others. The oversight committee is the way to go in the sense that you, you can look at the day-to-day, the -day, you can examine the day-to-day -day function of, of government but let's face it, the, the executive is supposed to be accountable to the parliament. And it seems to me only fair that, that these committees are able to function so as to, to keep the executive on its toes, as it, as it were. So we, I think that, that would have been the, the, the main aspect of it. Uh, so I, I like that. I, mean, I like the discussions which came out of that. Uh, the other discussions we would have had really would have been the the complement of staff, which, which you have in, in the communications um, uh, department. Of course, we recognize that you didn't just start yesterday. Uh, we have started our own thing. We, we have been doing some aspects of it. We have been, we purchased some equipment and so on. But it was still a good experience to, to get a hands-on view of, of what, how it has been set up and to see the purposes to, to which the uh, a communications department can, can be put. Uh, I must say that there are what we see here is pretty much in sync with, with what with where we've been going in in, in Barbados. Um, but uh, it was good to be able to come to a jurisdiction with which we have had a long and, and worthwhile relationship to, to you know discuss it so we can borrow what is what is best from it. Your closing statements, please. Barbados. Uh, we, we consider ourselves a, a mature democracy. Uh, we celebrated 375 years as a parliament uh, a couple, that would have been last, last year or two years ago. Uh, actually, um, when I think about the relationship which Barbados and uh, Trinidad has enjoyed, I note that uh, the Speaker of Trinidad was the one overseas uh, uh, speaker who, who we invited and he would have been there on that occasion. We are celebrating 50 years as an independent um, uh, nation, which uh, we have a whole year of celebrations. We planned which culminates on the 30th of November, the, the 50th anniversary. Uh, it seems to me a, a natural step now uh, to do something as significant as putting um, a dedicated television channel in place 
so as to service the, the people of Barbados more in terms of bringing Parliament closer to them. So um, I would say that I was um, I'm very grateful to, to have had this opportunity to interact with, with your, your staff and uh, to, to learn from you and to, to learn with you. And uh, we're looking forward to rolling out our own in a very short space of time. And uh, we'll come back and do, I'll come back and do an interview with some members here so we have some material to put on our, our stations. <laughs>